17 grand final, which my co-commentator Ron Brain was also commentating. And the other 15s you did earlier in the morning, you're up very early, but you're used to that, aren't you, down at APCO? Ron Brain, good afternoon and welcome to the Country FM microphone. Yeah, thank you very much, Jason. And I must apologise to all my customers down at Sunny Bay on Heads because I didn't get there this morning due to uh, football commitments and uh, some very good junior football this morning, West Coast Junior Football League. And uh, for people that may not know, the uh, under-15 Division Three Grand Final was won uh, comfortably by the Lara Cats over South Bowen. Likewise, in the under-17 game, the South Bowen side, which uh, have been very successful over the years uh, in their junior ranks, were beaten by Grovedale Gold in a very good game of football as well. So, yes, it's a pleasure to be here again, Jason, and uh, I'm sure that... Uh, our special guest commentator will be able to carry me through proceedings, having assisted in the, this morning's affair at Lara. Yes, our uh, special comments man this afternoon helped Ron out with the under-15 game earlier this morning, and he's here with us for the, ma the main match here at Godfrey Street, the coach of the Geelong West Cricket and Football Club, Stuart Scott. Stewie, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jason. And we can just tell you quickly before we get into Stewie's selections and Ron's that the reserves, the North Geelong reserves, won 13 12 90, quite comfortably over Carrara, 6 6 42. Now, boys, are just about to start here. Umpire Jonathan grabs us in the middle with Bob Beatty this afternoon, the central umpires. We've got uh, Steve Sholofu and Paul McAnini on the boundary Ooh. line and Phil Gibbons and Clive Haywood in the goal square. Stewie, uh, who do you think, Werribee or Thompson in the first semi final? Uh, I think Thompson's centre line will get them through by 22 points. Ronnie? I reckon uh, we're every Central's after last week. Well, I'm going for Thompson as well as we start the first semi-final here at Godfrey Street. Timmy Gardner, the Whitley medalist, gets the first kick down towards Menzies. Across there also is a Cunningham, but Menzies can pick it up and go long. They're kicking with the aid of a couple of gold breeze here, Thompson. Go up towards Cowan and Buck. Buck behind there, and he's going to see it through for the first score of the day. One behind to the Thompson Tigers. So we're a bit divided up here this afternoon. A couple for Thompson and one for Werribee. That's not unusual for us, is it, Ron? Certainly not. <laughs> So one behind on the scoreboard already for Thompson. They're kicking to the uh, city end of Godfrey Street. And uh, the Breeze, two or three goals, you think, Stewie? Two yeah, goals. I think two there, Jason. And uh, the umpire, Bob Beattie, just having a bit of a discussion with Christian McFarlane by the looks of it from Thompson. And I think he's been ordered off. I don't know what for. Bernardo, his direct opponent's following him. In fact, I think they both might be going off. They are, and uh, Ambrose Kelly to come on for Thompson. So we've only been going... Uh... Yeah, I turned it on, Jason. Oh, did you? Yes. Good boy. Well done, you've turned the time clock on. We've only been going a minute or so. And Harris is on for McFarlane. And coming on for uh, Whoever Central side. Going off was Bernardo. Just trying to pick up the player who came on. It looks like it's... Uh, Timmy Ellis. Timmy Ellis. One of the emergencies up. Yep, one of the emergencies into the side. Kick out from Buck goes towards half foot. Cunningham well pulled off the ball there without the footy. He's going to get the free kick at half back. Member side. Mm. Goes wide now. All oh, very wide. It's going to be too wide. A couple of marks in the boundary line there. And it's out of bounds on the full. Timmy Garden, the closest man for Thompson. So he's going to take the free kick. It actually sounds like we're calling from the depths of the deep blue sea today, doesn't it? There's sort of an echo, echo, echo. Sounds like we're headset. in the dungeon. Yeah, that's a Justin, Justin, Justin. <laughs> yes, maybe the echo has had something to do with these proceedings here this afternoon. There's Timmy Gardner, the uh, Neville Whitley medalist. Thumps it up. Not a very good kick. And uh, Timmy Ellis, strong as an ox. Uh, good footy there, just coming onto the ground. Good use of the body, Luke Luddick. Uh, got his opponent there in Jason Stein out of the way. Now, hand pass, Morley under pressure. Good enough, though, to get it back to uh, Delaney. And uh, that was the skipper of the Werribee Central side. He's on hands and knees fighting after the footy. But unfortunately, uh, for the Werribee Central side, who had some momentum running down the ground, was well contained there by Timmy Gardner's uh, efforts. And, uh, well, the bounce down now occurs at centre half forward as uh, Werribee Central's down defending grimly. <laughs> Justin, Justin was uh, collared and uh, the loose ball spills now. Morley, good on his left foot, just finds uh, Luddick at centre wing who pivots and kicks long, but oh, good fist away there from Atchison who's wearing again number 14. They can't find his number 16 because he is listed in the program. He may have sold it, but uh, get back to the footy. Up there again, Atchison. No, he is wearing number 6 today. There you go, so right. yeah, they did find on. 
and uh, I'm pleased about that. And, uh, whatever's happened, we're all better now, and we're back on top of the surface. As we see a nice kick there from uh, the Thompson side, and it looks like the 13 Guernsey, I would suggest, is Withers. Yes, it is. Shane Withers was wearing a 52, I think, last week, but he's got 13 on. Gardner's back in the side. That's Lunchy Gardner, the small man, and he goes it, goes it now. He's got number 52 on his back, close to the boundary line. Galauco right next to him. We saw Mick Galauco have a good game last week for the Centrals also against Bell Post Hill, and he looks like he's got the job on Andrew Gardner this afternoon. Boundary throw in about 30 metres around, member side. Thompson attacking. The aid of a couple of goal breeze. Pilchers with double hand. That goes towards all Barry Delaney, who got rid of the footy pretty quickly. Over the top there, Harris also. He came off to McFarlane. And McFarlane looks like he's ready to come back on on the boundary line. So Harris might be coming back off. It's going to be a ball up. Umpire grabs us now. To bounce the ball at half forward. And a pack of players around the ball. Justin to do the ruck work with Filchins used his body. None, none can get an effective tap. Or Withers out of the pack. Can he kick the goal? He has. Great kick from Shane Withers. Oh, and I'd like to see the replay of that. It happened so quick. And uh, some great camera work there by Brett Revere. Picked that up and... Uh, Gee, what a great goal. Shane Withers wearing the 13 Guernsey this afternoon, gentlemen, and uh, it's, uh, it can be lucky for some. Uh, can, Ronald. I'm just trying to pick up who else has come in, uh, in for the Werribee side. Well, actually, I thought it, it might have been Hanson, but he's on the ground. I think it might be Gus Cicino. Uh, can't actually see Day on the ground, uh, although Bernardo could be on for Day. Uh, if I didn't see if he was on the bench or not, I think he might Day be. was picked at centre-half back, but I can't see the 60 Guernsey anywhere out there at the moment, there's, there's been a good tackle, and Richardson sort of gets up and says to umpire Bobby Beattie, gee, Bob, that was a good tackle, wasn't it? Yes, I think uh, I think Mike Day and Bernardo might be on the bench, actually. So they're going pretty small, where by the looks of it. And one of them is Barry Delaney there. Can't get the ball away. It's an half back. Richardson can off one step, goes towards Cowan and Buck, but it's down the field. Richardson got dumped after it. And Cowan was the closest there. Menzies just pulled away a couple of steps, so uh, the big plugger could have the kick. In fact, no, Menzies... Umpire Beattie has said it's going to be his. And from about 25 metres out, 45 degree angle, Menzies. Chance to kick Thompson's second goal. Just been going four and a half minutes in this first quarter. And Thompson, 1-1-7. One, one, they lead Werribee Centres, who get to really take the ball over the half their half-forward line. Menzies now comes in. In with the aid of a breeze. And he runs in. Oh, he's kicked it very lazily and kicked it off to the far side for one behind. You don't win finals doing that sort of thing, do you? I'm sorry to be critical. <coughs> but, uh, no, I'm taking you four and a half minutes, Ron, so it's well, good to see. Well, I mean, you know, he's only 30 metres out, and uh, he could have done a lot better than that. Kick in by Buck, goes to the other side, looking for Taylor, and also out there, Filchins. Taylor got towards Humphrey, or gives it to guard, and then gives it to Withers. Two goals in two minutes, he's done it. Very good play by the Rover. And Shane Withers, the, the quick reply from that kick from Buck from full back, and it's going to be his second goal. Well, uh, Thompson's starting a little bit better than what they did last week. Yeah, and uh, Werribee are probably following the uh, the same form from last week. They started very slowly, um, and it's only through Belpo's still last week not being able to convert early that kept them in the contest. But you know, if Thompson can put another couple of uh, goals on the board and can convert from their opportunities, then uh, Werribee might find themselves uh, behind the eight ball from the start again. Landers Bull and Wisbowski, Charter Accounts first quarter scoreboard. Thompson 2 1 13, lead Werribee Central, so we yet to score. We've been playing nearly six minutes in this first quarter. The first semi-final of GDFL football this afternoon. And it's in the middle still. Darlow trying to fight his way through. Mark Harris wrapped him up, though, and umpire Beattie to come in and have a secondary bounce in the middle. Well, you know, Bobby should have... Bobby Beattie, the umpire, should have penalised Darlow then. I thought he was holding the football, tried to break two tackles and was caught, and he bounces it and creates another congestion. Pilchins gets a double-hander out towards the wing position, and Harton is at advantage. No, it isn't. Darlow tried to go off, but it's going to have to come back to Darren Harton on the wing, on the members' side. And... Uh, had a fairly good second half, as did most of the Werribee Central's players last week against Bell Post Hill in the elimination final to get them into this match. He goes towards half-back, running at it there was Buchanan, can't take the mark. Adrian Hart a long way out from half-back. Did he get pulled off the ball by Grapsis? He did. And it's going to be a free kick to Adrian Hart at half-forward on the members' side, about 65 metres out. Kicking into the breeze, though. There'll have to be a lead on. Christian Smith at full-back this afternoon for the... Thompson side goes up towards Atchison and Taylor limping off. We see in front of us Nathan Taylor, the big ruckman, and that's not going to go well for Thompson there. He's been an influential player through the season, but he's off with what looks to be a knee or an ankle injury. So he's right ankle. He might have uh, ricked. And Christian McFarlane ready to come back on for him, but we've got Matheson, the centre-half forward for Werribee with the free kick, and he goes for goal. He's pushed it out to the near side. It's still in play. It hasn't gone through yet. Oh, a little toe poke there. Was it a goal? 
No, it was one behind. I think it might have been Slade Hennessy with that. This one thing that could uh, suit Matheson if he gets himself in front, especially with him kicking into the breeze, is uh, Atchison's the type of player that likes to mark from behind. And uh, it's a pretty big frame to get your body up and over, and with the ball holding up a little bit, that could suit Atchison here. Oh, Timmy uh, Gardner trapped it well there at half back. He just shows the foot. He actually goes backwards, which was good vision, because Nance Curvis was there plenty of time to steady. Kicks the ball up there looking for Justin. Justin, the ball's a bit well weighted. There's been a tackle on that player, Nance Curvis, very yeah, late. Morley. And against uh, Justin Morley, the halfback flanker for the Werribee Central side. So now the relay free kick right in the middle of the ground here at Godfrey Street. Taken by Justin Justin. The echo, long bomb. Oh, great mark there taken by the halfback flanker for the Centrals, Dennis Cunningham. He'll step in the side now for the Centurions. And 50 from umpire grabs this there for running over the mark. So it's going to come down into the middle of the ground for Werribee Centrals. The ball coming back to Cunningham. Take his free kick. And just over the centre square in the middle. Dennis Cunningham now to push the Werribee Centrals into attack. They're one behind. They trail Thompson 2-2-14. Two, two, Early stage of this first semi-final. It goes long towards Vilchins and Matheson. Matheson in front can't take the mark. Buchanan rode beautifully, but the handball chopped off by Nan Curvis. Kicks long towards the wing. Gardner, that's Andrew, the smaller Gardner. Oh, can he get around the tackle? Well, he ducked his head. Didn't get a free kick. Darlow there is surrounded by Centurions. Umpire Grapsis will come in and bounce the ball on the outer side on the wing position. A little bit of undisciplined play from uh, both sides. It's three 50-metre penalties in the first 10 minutes of the game, um, and, and both coming from uh, you know opposing forward line. So it's an area of the ground where you don't want the ball to disappear too quickly from you. Want to try and get a conversion out of it. Pilchins got a high tackle there, but couldn't get a free kick. It was on to uh, Richardson, then gives it to Gardner. He goes right foot towards Cow and gets a hand to it. Then butters up again. Oh, he's tackled by Buck, but gets his hands free. Handball over top to Nan Curvis. Morley intercepts. Runs from half back now on the outer side. Got a bit of time to set something up. The left boot wide, very wide. Slade Hennessy in the boundary line, and the boundary line wins that on, on that occasion. And it's going to be a free kick to Christian Smith on the wing. And they've had to make a few changes, Thompson with Taylor going off the ground. Goes up towards McFarlane, who's back at centre-half forward now. And wrapped up there, Hanson. We see that Mark Harris has gone back to full-back for Thompson. And it looks like Christian Smith might be uh, running in the ruck now with Nathan Taylor off the ground, the big ruckman. Ball up at centre-half forward for the Tigers. Justin and also Phil. Vilchins get the high tackle, no free kick. Pushed out towards Hart, Timmy Gardner right next to him also. Hart over the top, can't pick it up. Through, oh, good handball towards Humphrey. Gets a right foot kick up towards Cow and uses his strength against Buck and takes a very strong mark. Yeah, good use of the body. Got his opponent under the footy, Stewie, didn't he? And then just leant back and took an ala ablet job. That is Great catch. Ronald. It's probably the only position on the field, uh, if you have a look around, it's probably the only position on the field where the Thompson are actually either taller or stronger than their opponent, especially with uh, Taylor off. I mean, they've had to throw their side around a bit, and that could be a little bit disruptive. So Cowan puts through his first goal this afternoon from 20 metres out. And Thompson's third. They go to 3-2-20. They lead Werribee Central's one behind by 19 points on the LBW Channel Accounts first quarter scoreboard. We've been going nearly 11 minutes in this first term. And the 1996 GDFL finals in full swing. The first semi-final this afternoon. Live and exclusive on 89.1 Country FM. And a good start by the Tigers. Yeah, great start, uh, Jason. And uh, don't forget, too, of course, that uh, uh, Guest Video will be back here again tomorrow. Covered uh, the second semi-final on the uh, narrative station 94.9 oh, FM guest FM in conjunction with Country FM so uh, for people that come to the football tomorrow uh, don't agree with that sit in your car and listen to the footy no don't there is that decision there Jason no. I think if, if you know if um, Thompson player was caught under the ball and Vilson's old on the ball if he happens to be a little bit too early well Britain can't do much about that yeah Vilson's went up there and gave a free kick away for pushing the back to uh, Christian Smith who's in the ruck but he's kicked it straight to Cunningham oh poor kick off the boot though <laughs> very wide and out of bounds it's a boundary thrown at half forward it nearly went backwards in the end poor kick off the boot there from Cunningham it took a good mark you'd want to dig a big hole wouldn't you really <laughs> you certainly would Boundary throw and Vilchins gets his left fist hook, punched on by Richardson. Cunningham again, all wrapped oh, up. Ball. Withers went straight in the yeah. tackle, holding the ball. Yeah. Had a go at him. So Withers, who's been influential in the first 11 minutes of this game, kicked two goals, and we'll have a big job this afternoon roving. He's at centre-half forward, and it's a pretty congested forward line yeah, at the moment. Yeah, back there. Yeah. Vilchins is the big man right back in 
with Cowan. He gives it off to Menzies. He goes long in that direction. Cowan and Filchers. Filchers the double fist. A good punch away to Morley. Shepherds for Edgar. Oh, free kick found. And it's advantage paid. So Edgar's got it on half back out of side for where he goes short towards Hennessy. And in front of Burke, he takes the mark. Christian McFarland. I was out, was out of bounds, actually, on the full. So it's going to be a free kick to Burke. And you said McFarland, did you, Ron? Yeah, he's in trouble. Oh, he is too, on his ankle, which he had a broken foot. And it's up there. Oh, Cowan! Oh, went up very. Oh, <laughs> but got nowhere near the football. And it's going to be a free kick to Vilchens. That's a big frame to be hit. Oh, the ground, oh I'll say. You have to put some dirty net. <laughs> yeah, I'll say McFarlane's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he is in a lot of strife. And Vilchens now switches play, goes wide. Or oh, Richardson getting back there, can't get a hand to a Galauka, though. He put him off. The Galauka oh, ran without it there was Lamb. Richardson gets around off one step, goes with his right boot, but it's out of bounds on the full. And it's going to be a free kick in the back pocket for Werribee. And we see McFarlane still hobbling around. He's going to try and run it out. By the looks of it, he doesn't want to come off. Pretty seen Taylor come off at uh, about the five, six minute mark of this quarter. The Thompson Ruckman. So a few changes already need to be uh, made by Alan Richardson and his match committee. Buck from the back pocket goes wide, looking for Vilchen Smith in front. Good mark. He takes a very good mark. And got one to go on with from Vilchens too. He did. I think that uh, I think McFarlane's got to come off the ground. I mean, there's no point holding around the half um, forward line. I mean, you might as well be back off the ground and have somebody else fresh there. Smith goes up long towards Cowan and also Nan Curvis. And the mark's been paid. No, it's a free kick for a push. Against Mark Cowan and Terry Nan Curvis wouldn't be very happy because he took the chest mark 10 metres from goal. And now the Centurions, can they can defend. Out there to a half back. Oh, Richardson again. He's had the take too. And normally he's a lovely kick of the footy. And you wouldn't believe it. He's kicked it out of bounds again. Same spot. Gareth Buckle, we getting a sore foot. Due to restart. <laughs> well, McFarlane is still on the ground. Justin Morley is next to him. And he's still hobbling around. Looking better, though. Yeah, he does look a bit better, doesn't he? He might have just got a kick on the ankle. He did have a broken foot that kept him out of the game for about five or six weeks. And just ran into a bit of form in the second half last week against Eastern Suburbs. Wide kick from Buck looking for Vilchens. Held on to by umpire. Held on to. And umpire Beattie says it's his free kick. Richardson held on to him. Vilchens at half back. Continues to go wide. Grandstand side looking for Matheson. Punched away by Darlow. And it's going to be out of bounds. Yeah, strong, gonna... strong play, Craig Darlow. Negative, but, uh, well, they're defending at the moment. Uh, and it was good footy. Rocket Gibraltar of the Centurions, dictating terms in the middle. Bounty throw in right in front of the comedy position. Good work there from uh, Vilsons, but uh, sharked beautifully by Timmy Gardner. Over to the run of the back pocket player, it, uh, the orator. Shane grabs us, kicks it long. The bouncing ball couldn't be trapped in the air. It's bounced, bounced, bounced up to the forward pocket. No one could control it, and it's uh, out of bounds in the left forward pocket, about 25 metres from the Thompson goal, doing all the attacking in this first quarter of the first semi-final GDFL football on Country FM, because Country FM is country football. Justin gets it down to the front of the pack. Richardson rides the bump, then tries to get a handball away. It's punched on by Humphrey. Oh, straight through McFarlane. Made a miraculous recovery, uh, but has kicked one behind. So Thompson go on to 3-3-21. They lead Werribee Central's one behind on the old BW Charter Accountants first quarter scoreboard. We've been going nearly 16 minutes in this first term. So a 20-point lead for the Thompson Tigers, kicking with the aid of two-goal breeze, two or three goals. Pretty fairly similar to, uh, you know, last week's sort of start where um, Belpost still had a lot of the ball in their forward line. They weren't quite able to convert, and um, they converted early here, Thompson. But the last five or six minutes, they probably had three or four opportunities. They would have liked to have probably got another couple of goals out of Richardson's those. Richardson's had a couple, hasn't he? Yeah, and for their sake, uh, they just hope that doesn't come a bit costly later on, like it did with Belpost still last week. Buck to kick in, comes grandstand side looking for Vilchens, the big frames up there, or oh, interfered with a bit by Lamb there, but the umpire lets it go on. Good contest from Smith behind him, and it's going to be a boundary thrown at half forward. So Vilchens getting back there, Justin doing the ruck work in the middle with Smith going back, a kick behind the play. He went at it then and couldn't get it, Edgar did, or oh, Darlow wrapped up Chris Gardner, is that dropping the ball? Yes it is, umpire Bob Birdie says. And Chris Gardner, the veteran of the side, 246 games, I think it is now, for Chris Gardner. Goes long towards centre-half forward, looking for Nan Curvis, who goes up, but in front, taking a great mark, is Cunningham. He's killed him, hasn't he? Oh, another great game. He played well last week, too, against Bell Post Hill, and goes towards the wing, looking for Matheson. Smith, Atchison behind, thump, Stein. 
on hands and knees or push in the back there, but none forthcoming. A free kick from umpire grabs us. What's your decision, Danny, fellas, that holding the ball? I mean, uh, we can't really have a lot of time to do much with it. That was a tough one. It was a I mean, tough he's grabbed call. the ball, he's turned around, bang, he's caught holding the ball. Sorry, mate. Where, where's his previous opportunity to kick into the social room? I mean, it's... And umpire, but he was a long way away too, wasn't he, actually? He was at half forward when he made that decision. Smith goes up, or oh, Humphrey ends up getting the stump down towards, back towards Hanson, running back towards his goal. He's over the top now. He gets up, handball to Barry Delaney. Slips one tackle, then doesn't slip the Humphrey tackle. Hanson, handball straight to Menzies. He's wrapped up, tries to get rid of the footy. Slade Hennessy at centre-half back for Werribee to relieve. The pressure goes wide. Now it's a foot race. Oh, Andrew Gardner's going to win that quite easily. He's got support in Nan Curvis as well. Can he pick it up the little man? He can. He goes long with his right boot towards centre-half forward. McFarlane, oh, too strong and too big against Galauka there, the smaller Werribee Central's backman. Now, how about it come across for Galauka would be standing next to McFarlane? It's not as if the ball's just been in that area and then it's come back out and quickly gone back in. I mean, it's been on the other side of the ground so there's been ample time for uh, a taller Werribee option to push over there and I think they've, they've probably overlooked that at that time. So Christian McFarlane from 30 metres out, 45 degree angle and we saw him hobbling around a few minutes ago. He's back though now, he kicks for goal he tries to just stab towards the goal and has missed it to the near side for one behind. He's second of the afternoon and it's 3-4-22 Thompson, Werribee Central's one behind on the LBW Charlie Accounts first quarter scoreboard. We've been going 18 and a half minutes. The kick in by Buck is very wide towards Luddick. In fact, it's out of bounds and Luddick can't touch it before it is out of bounds. So it's going to be a free kick and it's going to be Jason Stein on the outer side. Just on the 50. He runs very close to Luddick on the mark. Goes towards Cowan getting up. Oh, Alice. And also there was Richardson. Run through Withers. Handball over the top. Galauka and also Gardner. And it's going to be a boundary throw in right next to the behind post with the Tigers attacking once again. Well, there's been a free kick, I think, picked out of this. Gardner was dealt with. Uh, is it Gardner Withers, or I think. is it Withers? Mm. After the ball had gone against Tim Ellis, I think you're fine. And the uh, umpire Beatty has uh, re rewarded Shane Withers with the free kick. And this could be a costly one. Time check. Nearly 20 minutes gone of this uh, very important first quarter. See Hart something a little bit to say there. Maybe he was the one that was involved with it. Um, if it was an undisciplined act, I mean, it's both sides have probably um, you know, oh. shown a bit of poor discipline at that stage. Well, Witters has walked up to uh, Timmy Ellis and has told him all about his third goal this afternoon. <laughs> Timmy Ellis has just given him the big shove back onto the ground, but Witters, three goals in the first quarter. And, uh, well, a big start by Shane Witters. And Thompson's uh, fourth goal. 4-4-28, they lead Werribee Central's one behind by 27 points in the LBW Charlie Accountants' first quarter scoreboard. And Stewie, you'd rather be in Alan Richardson's position at quarter time than Mick Foster's at the moment, wouldn't you? Oh, at this period in time, I would. But Mick will obviously uh, try and get his troops back on hand. They were sort of in a similar situation last week, so they can come from behind. Pilchins and Smith go up in the middle. Falls towards Lamb, who can't pick it up. Adrian Hart, a big stump back towards Timmy Ellis. Gets his kick away towards half back for Thompson. Gardner back there takes a good mark in front of Buchanan. So Chrissy Gardner, the veteran of the Thompson side, goes long towards the wing. Richardson up, had his name on it, but couldn't take the mark. Spicer rose, handball over top to Laney, but it's chopped off by Smith. Spicer works hard again, so does Smith. Barry Delaney ripped off the footy. Now he's, uh, Darlow's got time to give it back to Adrian Hart. Goes towards Matheson and Atchison at centre-half forward. Matheson can run onto it. Handball to Edgar in support. Lines up, little left foot kicks OK. Oh, Kochevatkin can't take the mark. It was just bounced in front of him, Harris. Tapped on, though. Coming through is Luddy. Can't pick it up. Atchison's right next to him. Fine. Yeah, there was the hold. Good work, Robbie Edgar. Punching that ball forward. Creating the opportunity there for his teammate. And uh, the oh, reward. And Grapsis has been sent from the field for obviously abusing umpire there, Beatty. So Shane Grapsis down. And to the boundary line, down to 17 players. Thompson now. And it's that's uh, not like the old rate has to say something. No, never. Hopefully, for us, he'll be joining our uh, Country FM commentary team sometime during the finals. But if Thompson keeps winning well, I don't think he will be able to join. So, uh, well, if he keeps doing that, he might be out of the side. He might be up here. But he's off the ground. And Luke Luddick will come in from uh, 15 metres out directly in front, kick for goal, and will push it into the teeth of the breeze and has put it through, though, for one behind. Bad miss. And Stewie had pencilled that in as a goal, had you, Stewie? I certainly had done that. <laughs> so wherever Central's go to two behinds. Thompson 4-4-28. LBW Charlie Accountants first quarter scoreboard. One of the more reliable kicks in the Werribee side. You wouldn't expect uh, Luke to miss too many of them. 
22 minutes gone in this first quarter of the first semi-final. Up towards half-back, the kick-in from Harris. Matheson gives it to Barry Delaney, wrapped up by Timmy Gardner. Richardson now could have handballed to Burke. Alex to just hurriedly kick towards the wing and goes out towards M Menzies and also Cunningham. Keeps it in for Cunningham, Menzies does. Handball's good. Oh, Spicer wrapped up there by Richardson. Withers there as well. Hart on hands and they throw it out to Timmy Ellis. And he takes a bounce, runs a long half forward. He's got Matheson, he's got two bounces. He can keep running. He draws Atchison now. Goes to his right boot, long back towards Luddick and Stein. Luddick takes a good mark, runs in, kicks the goal. Good play, Timmy Ellis. Good finish, Luke Luddick, a goal on that occasion. Good work by Brad Spicer, too. Done a bit of hard work. The ball was smothered, but uh, he was there in support once the ball hit the ground to give a shepherd as well. So Werribee kicked there first through Luke Laddick, 1-2-8. They trail Thompson 4-4-28 on the LBW trailer counts. First quarter scoreboard, 22, nearly 23 minutes gone in this first quarter. Hope you join the call, the kick-by-kick -kick description on Country FM 89.1. FM on your dial is Country Footy here at Godfrey Street. First semi-final, GDFL footy for 96. And the big fella, Bilson's got it out of the centre of the ground. Couldn't find Delaney. The ball bounced rather treacherously for him. Now Lamb, can he pick it up? Lost his footing and is swarmed by Werribee Centurions. As we see Adrian Hart and Justin Morley unravel Anthony Lamb. Ball now bounced down at the centre half forward. Tops it into attack. Actually, that, on that occasion, that was interesting. Uh, the big fella, Ed uh, McFarlane, got a handle on that uh, bounce down. There's been a whistle on play. Timmy Gardner was held off it without the footy, and he'll get the free kick. Similar situation the last week where Wilson's drops down into the uh, forward line in front of Cowan. They've got nowhere else for the... Uh, they, they can't go in that area, so they've got to go wide enough the ball's gone out of bounds. I'd still like to see one of the taller, not they've got too many tall ones on the ground, but if they can get a taller bloke to go down with Wilson's and try and lead him out of that area to give Cowan a straight You'd think the with ball. the wind you'd just push Smith back, push Smith into the ruck with and, 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 and just and push him wide, yeah. Bilchins now with a double hander, goes towards Hanson, wrapped up from that boundary throw in. Withers, who's had a great first quarter, goes wide, and it's very wide. In fact, it's going to be out of bounds on the full Gareth Buck to take the free kick in the last line of defence for the Centurions, who trail by 20 points. Well, that breeze, look at those flags on the opposite side of the ground there. It's uh, quite strong. It's probably worth four. We may have underrated it. Yeah, two yeah. it's just picked up in the last 10 minutes or so. So Werribee will have the aid of that in the second quarter. Buck kicks into the teeth of the breeze, and it's a wobbly old punt too. In front there was Smith. McFarlane taps it on to Timmy Gardner. Can't pick it up, though. Stein... And also Darlow, who worked very hard last week for the Centurions, goes wide to Luddick and Edgar. Two out against Rick Humphrey, but they can't keep the ball in. And it's going to be a boundary throw in just the attacking side of wing for the Centurions. I think the one thing when we generally look at the uh, the breeze or the advantage of the breeze, it's uh, you know, a lot of time it's not so much the advantage of actually kicking with it, it's it's detrimental trying to actually kick it. I mean, we've seen that kick coming out of the back line there before. It's very hard to get it to the spot you want to get it to and also very hard to get the ball to spin right so that makes it easier for your teammate to mark it. Stein there was wrapped up, could have been holding the ball. He had it for a very long time there as he tried to run off, but the umpire has said he's going to throw it in. The ball went out of bounds from that tackle. Filchins and Christian Smith, as we said earlier. Nathan Taylor, the Thompson Ruckman, off the ground with an ankle injury by the looks of it. Tim Gardner over the top of that ball, running through Darlow. He's wrapped up, loses the footy. Tim Gardner fights over it with David Burke, his Thompson teammate, falls towards Barry Delaney. It's just inside 50 now for the Centurions. The ball is still in play. Now the umpire grabs this, will come in and bounce it. Just inside the 50 metre line for Werribee. A yeah, very sh uh, scrappy piece of football there. No one can get a clean handle on the ball. Needless to say, umpire grabs us will bounce. Good 45 metres from the Centurions' goal. Wherever Central's uh, captain there in Barry Delaney uh, tried to get a possession there after that uh, bounce down, but couldn't do so. Alan Richardson clears it nicely at the centre wing, and now there's an opportunity for Thompson. Off hands, reading the flight of the football superbly was uh, Terry Nan Curtis, but his kick. Well marked there, Justin Moore, who breaks clear at half-back. Goes long towards Bilchins and Smith. Bilchins uses his big frame there and just keeps Smith off the ball. Just worked him out of that well, didn't he? He worked off well. It could be a good mark, too. So Bilchins now just inside the centre square. Goes long. The lead's on from Matheson over the back. Atchison taps it away. Timely fist there. Goes towards Allison Lamb. Ellis uses his strength. Gets away. Atchison then tackles him. He loses the footy. Rick Humphrey. Just nice and cool and calm. Gets it wide towards oh, Timmy Gardner. who drops off the chest mark, but he's still there. Well shepherded by Lamb. Now he can use Lamb. Good little handball. That was good. Lamb close to the boundary line. Handball to Withers. 
Sands and Waits then gets away. They all go towards Lamb, so Withers has a bit of a chance to go wide towards Menzies. And Dale Menzies takes the mark, close to the boundary line. Plays on quickly, got McFarlane and Cowan coming out. They've got an extra man back there, though, Werribee. And it is Spicer. It goes towards Justin, though. Left foot kick long towards Gardner and Galauka. Galauka drops the chest mark. He's still over the top of the footy. Goes towards the safety of the boundary line. It's not over, though. McFarlane's there, chops it off. Now Werribee got the numbers. Spicer over the top. Does he get a free kick? Yes, he does. So the two Timmies up here were having a little bit of yeah. courage. Timmy Gardner, Timmy Osman. Uh, again, with the trouble for Thompson. Rick Humphrey limps off the ground. So a kick now for Werribee goes wide. Smith, free kick found though for a hold. It's going to go to Adrian Hart. And Lamb stands to mark Adrian Hart now. Tries to get around him. He does so. Has to go onto his non-preferred right foot though. It's very close to the boundary line. Was it out? Oh, Luddick, it is out of bounds. And Luke Luddick has to give it up to Mickey Gann, who I think just came on for Rick Humphrey there. When Humphrey went off. No arguments there from Luddick, so he's a very, very well disciplined or he thought the decision was right. <laughs> Dan goes along towards Nan Curvis. Good strength. Oh, one oh. by Beatty. Gee, use of the body there, but he said no. And hang on a minute. Umpire Beatty has said wait, and somebody has abused him, and I, I think, think it might be Cowan. Cowan might be gone. Well, umpire Beatty hasn't got a very thick skin because uh, that looked like a pretty fair bump there, use of the body by Nan Curvis. Well, yeah, but uh, still, there are people uh, on the boundary line list uh, watching the football and, uh, well, no language can be used and uh, he's obviously using the rules to the letter. Well, undisciplined play from Thompson. They've got two players off. Very bit of trouble, though. Two players off, sent off the ground, two players off, injured. This, yeah. uh, don't know what they may, may not take any further part in the ground. Um, sure Taylor looked pretty bad when he came off. Yeah, I didn't see Humphrey fresh. come off. What was he like, Shuey? Oh, he had, a, he had a reasonable sort of a limp that showed that he, you know, he, he's going to require a bit of ice, I think, and that obviously depends on how he responds to that. So a free kick for Werribee at half back. Falls towards Alice at centre at center wing. Gives it to Luddick. Now, can give it long towards Matheson and Atchison. Atchison over the back. Big thump away. Good play. Stein with him, but he had to, he's outnumbered. Ed got tapped. Good tackle by Stein. Goes towards Burke now. He'll want to run it towards the boundary line. He does now. No, it's not out. Matheson's still got it. Keeps it in. Now Pack develops. And Matheson and also Atchison in there. He's a bit hard there, uh, Matheson. On, I think oh, it'll be an Atchison underneath there. A pretty big frame to be laying on top. Yeah, I think uh, Atchison's going to get a free kick out of it. So a bit of an undisciplined play there by Matheson as well. It's, both sides have probably let it, uh, their teammates down or their clubs down in that area so far in the game. 29 and a half minutes gone. Two players off the Tigers, so they're down to 16 players, but they do lead 4 4 to 1 2. Into the middle of the ground now from that free kick. Hanson over the top. Morley. He's wrapped up by Menzies. A too high umpire, but he says it's an advantage. Yes, it is. Spicer goes short towards Darlow. Can he stand? He does. Richardson right next to him, but he takes a good overhead mark just inside the centre square. Runs on now. The lead's on from Matheson. He goes in that direction. Atchison comes at him, but Matheson there, too strong. And just the ball on the right side there for Matheson to take the mark. Yeah, good pass, though. On 50. Oh, poor kick, though. Burke in front. Over the back of the pack there was Alice. He's wrapped up. Pack develops. The umpire lets it go. Now we have to come in and bounce the ball. Close to siren time here. Four quarter time in the first semi final. Thompson 4 4 28. Lead Werribee Central's 1 2 8. They've only got 16 players on the ground at the moment. If it is just to see now that's not playing, it might have worked in Werribee's favour. I think uh, Timmy Ellis has he's done quite well since he's been on the ground and his strengths. Uh, yeah. Down in that forward line could be a telling factor. Yeah, Edgar got that kick off the carpet there from the Thompson defence, and this has put them under a bit of pressure because Buchanan, oh, the goal sneak opportunist. Straighten up me, boy. He didn't really steady at all, and he started off last week uh, the same way, and uh, he did end up kicking two or three, but on that occasion he was well off line. I think he nearly had a kick in that same position, and he did the same thing last week. He might have been aiming for the post further over the back. <laughs> Perhaps they're the ones. Well, Harris to kick in all goes very wide, looking for Richardson and Darlow. Well, it's not going to matter. Richardson took the mark on 50, but it's not going to make any difference because it's quarter time here in the first semi-final for the Geelong District Football League this season. And Thompson, 4-4-28, lead Werribee Central's 1-3-9. The goal kickers to quarter time for Thompson. Well, Shane Withers had a standout first quarter. He kicked three goals, and the other goal was kicked by Mark Cowan, but he was sent off in the... Uh, last couple of minutes of that first term for a 15-minute rest for abusive language towards the umpire. And the one goal for Werribee Central is kicked by Luke Luddick. So it's 19 points of difference at quarter time. Now we'll uh, take a break, come back with our best players, and Stuart Scott has also ventured out to listen to Alan Richardson and Mick Foster at quarter time, the respective coaches of their sides. If you're listening to the first semi-final on 89.1 Country FM, back shortly with the second quarter and the wrap-up of the best players in the first quarter.